Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, I'm on the water right here at sunrise, although can't really see the sun today because it's real cloudy out here, but nevertheless, gonna do some ultralight fishing today and just catch whatever wants to play. And while I'm doing it, I'm going raw and uncut, which means no cuts, no edits. Y'all gonna see it all. Every fish caught, every fish I lose, every tree limb, turtle, any shenanigans that happens, Nothing's being edited out. So what I do on these videos is I just take a section of shoreline and just beat the banks, you know, throw it to down trees, brush piles, rocks, you know, anything we see down through here that could possibly have a fish on it, we're gonna throw at it. And what I'm gonna throw is my favorite ultralight bait in the world. That's a one inch gulp minnow. If I can get it turned around here, my fingers ain't wanting to work. That's a one inch gulp though on a 164th ounce jig head number eight hook that's the smelt color which kind of represents our shad out here which is the number one forage species fish i've got that on two pound test line on my ultralight i've had this ultralight rod for years that's a st croix panfish series rod with a dial 1000 series reel and so i'm just going to put the camera in the chest here and we're going to start fishing the camera is rolling this time i have actually caught one fish out here this morning already i done my little intro spiel started fishing caught a fish kind of glanced down at the camera just to see the time on it see how long it took me to get that first fish and realized that i hadn't turned the camera on <laughs> before i started talking so uh we got a real youtube professional at work here folks but the camera's definitely going now so we're good to go at this point. <laughs> you gotta understand, people, just cause a person does YouTube don't mean they any good at it. <laughs> but these raw and uncut videos, it's kind of, it's kind of, I feel like the most real fishing you're gonna find on YouTube. Most YouTube videos are just kind of highlight reels. Things are edited out. You, you see in the, the catches and not much else and with this you see those catches but you see everything else that goes with it too it's kind of like you were out here fishing with me just thankfully you're not because i don't have room to put you in this kayak other than maybe in my lap and well that might get a little uncomfortable especially some of you that i've seen out there <laughs> i don't want you in my lap I ain't got too many hot women that watch my channel, so <laughs> if we if we randomly picked a viewer, it would probably be some overweight old man. <laughs> so I sure don't want that sitting out here in my lap. But nevertheless, the goal with these is to hopefully create an experience like you were fishing with me today and You'd be hearing the same stories, seeing the same fish call, seeing the same snags. Hopefully we're gonna snag some fish in the mouth. That little fish I caught when I realized I hadn't been filming was a pretty good sized bluegill. I'd got him right there on that tree that's coming out. But I picked this section of shoreline here just cause nothing special about it. I just didn't think we'd see many boats today. I launched in a creek and had thought about fishing there, but uh, kayakers are out today. I wasn't the only kayak fisherman in that creek. There's two of them that beat me out here this morning. So I was like, well, that's fine. I'll just go out to the main channel. And it's still early enough now. We shouldn't see no, shouldn't see no boat traffic. This area through here, if we do see one, it'll be just a, an occasional ski boater or wakeboarder or something it won't be a lot of consistent traffic there's a fish there we go let's see what we got fish number two on the day number one when the camera is actually rolling fish when you get back down there i want you to tell your friend i'm sorry he thought he was getting the prestigious honor of being the first fish on the video and I botched it. And that fish, he botched it too. He missed his chance to get seen on camera right there. That fish right there, you know what he is? He's a gossiper. 
he was so excited to go back down there and tell his friend that I messed up, that he missed his moment of fame. That's, what, that's, that's how them gossiper people are. They, they miss out what's going on in their own life because they're so focused on what's going on in everybody else's. Facebook's full of that crap. That's why I can't hardly spend no time on social media because it's everybody's like that these days. Them fish are no different, you know. They're a little behind us. They behind in the times. We on the Facebook now. That fish airs on the on the MySpace. But that fish I caught that wasn't on video, that's probably one of his top six friends. He's got that Tom guy as his number one friend and that fish that I didn't get on videos his number two friend I thought for sure he'd have a another friend or three over there beside him but maybe not that's all right we'll just keep moving along here folks it's uh one of them things we're gonna we're gonna just throw at all this stuff today I don't know what all we will catch. It could be a variety. We'll get more bluegill than anything with this setup, but we should get some bass. Could be smallmouth, largemouth. There's yellow bass in here, white bass in here. May possibly get some green sunfish. May possibly get some skipjack. And then there could be uh, just one of them crazy catches too like a turtle or a gar or who knows you know it's the fun thing about doing this style of fishing is you just don't know when you feel that thump you don't know what it is could be anything everything will eat a small minnow like bait and that's what we're representing with this setup boy something Big splash right there. It must have been a carp or something. Got me distracted. I forgot to flip my bell over. Did you see that? I was going to try to just be cool about it and hope y'all didn't notice, but we're early enough in the video, well, there's still a few of you that ain't clicked off yet. So <laughs> somebody was bound to notice. I blame that fish though. He distracted me. I'm out here today in my Old Town kayak. This is just kind of my, I call it my bare bones setup because it's just basic. I've got a couple rod holders mounted to it and that's it. I ain't got a fish finder on here. I ain't got a motor, nothing like that. I'm just basically out here with a fishing pole today, just going fishing. I went up to, oh, what is, is that? Oh, that's a, night, that's a bass right there. Oh, he just spit it. Daggum it. It felt like a pretty good one, too. First, I thought I snagged, and then it then it give a little bit. And I was like, that's a fish. Daggone. Well, before that fish interrupted me, I was trying to say I went up to Ohio last week. And I fished a kayak catfishing tournament up there on Sandusky Bay and of course you know I go on a trip like that I got my my other kayak that's just rigged out all the bells and whistles and stuff and I tell you man traveling with that kayak with the motor and the live scope and the batteries and it's great on the water but boy it's a chore to deal with all that stuff you know carrying batteries into the hotel to charge and another one hit me right there but, you know you gotta charge the batteries you gotta break the kayak down because you know how people are they'll rob you blind you got that stuff sitting out on your kayak in a hotel parking lot and it's just a pain so coming out today i'm like you know what i need a day where i can just kind of decompress no batteries to charge when I get home no motors to deal with no no graphs just come out here and just go fishing 
bounce one off a tree and into a fish's mouth right there. That's what we're going to do. That's the kind of fishing that I want to do today, buddy. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's good for the soul to occasionally just go minimalist. Got one pole here we're going to be using. I do have another rod in the kayak. It's my skipjack rod, just in case we stumbled into a school of, of skipjack or white bass that were feeding on the surface or something. I brought it as we can we can throw at those, but there's a terrible cast right there. I'm gonna have to get a little closer to that bank. But otherwise though, we're just going with this rod right here and see whatever we can catch today. I tell you, it's good for the soul. You don't believe me, try it out. You're gonna feel a lot better when you get back home afterwards. And when you unhook your kayak or canoe or, you know, or even if you ain't got a kayak or canoe, maybe you're just going walking the bank doing this. When you get home and you got nothing to plug in, nothing to charge, it's just, it's a wonderful feeling. <laughs> It's hard to describe unless you've experienced it. But my other kayak is nice having the bells and whistles, you know. If you're fishing long hours or multiple days in a row, it's nice having that motor to get you place to place. And of course that motor I got's got the GPS functions like spot lock and whatnot too. So that's that's nice. I don't have to deal with a physical anchor. So it's got its it's got its advantages and disadvantages. But today, today I'm gonna end up I got a snag over here is what I got today. Boy folks, I tell you, if I didn't have everybody clicked off the video first thing, just let me get a snag or two right up here at the start. We'll have you all gone here within the first few minutes. <laughs> I said though man this is this is real fishing buddy you come fishing with me at these overhanging trees and brush and all that I promise you you and me both are gonna be in some snags it's unavoidable I'm gonna try it boy I got look at this I didn't get spun right I gotta push myself off these branches here folks we're gonna have spiders all over us I don't mind spiders. I'm not one of these people that is real scared of them, but I sure don't want them crawling all over me. There we go. Now we're back in business here. I think we might get this one back. I threw over one of them little, I call these little tree limbs like this jig snatchers because they find a way to snag your jigs. All right. Let's back it up here now. If any of you are still watching, <laughs> we, we survived that one. Goodness gracious. Some of y'all out there, if you're the kind of folks that likes to bet, you might get your, call your bookie in Vegas right now and see what we're gonna catch more of today, fish or snags. Right now, the snags are in the lead. <laughs> Between catching tree limbs and me fishing for a few minutes there earlier without the camera going, we in, we in bad shape today. We'll get it together here directly though. Things are gonna get better, folks. It always does. Here's a fish too, oh, I lost him. I had this one on there. I'll throw back over there. Something ran with it a little bit. There he is. There he is. I thought we might get one over there. His friend went for it and didn't get it. Come up here, fish. A little bluegill there, probably six inches or so. Boy, slinging water, I got it all over my face. I don't know if he got it in your face or not. I hope he did. 
if I gotta get soaking wet, y'all should too. That, boy, that fish has got a bad attitude. Let me check y'all out here. No, somehow he didn't get the camera lens. The fish had it in for me. For some reason, he seems to like y'all better than he likes me. Dang old fish. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to catch his family member over here too. I'm gonna tell them about it. I hope I catch his mama. Should go down there and bust his hind end for acting like that. These these mama bluegills, they don't they don't take no lip from their their children. They find one of their kids. Here's one. I hope this is the mama right here. It ain't. If I catch their mama though, they're gonna get a butt whoop when they get back down there. Bluegill mamas don't take no crap. And bluegill, they don't they don't ground their kids. They, they make them go pick a hickory switch. They'll be up here on the bank finding them a, a hickory tree. Get them a switch. You hear that? That fish is running off before I can get his name. Smart fish. Little, little hoodlum right there. Oh, I'm gonna catch this. It, we got some criminal activity with these bluegill going on over here. You see how they're acting. We're just gonna catch them all. We're gonna. We're going to give every one of them a lip piercing this morning. That'll show them. Let that jig sink down a little bit. I may have been fishing a little too fast. Oh. That one hit. As for the depth through here, people always want to know water temperature and depth. And I can't tell you either. <laughs> I don't know. It this bank drops off real steep, so it, it's you know obviously dirt shallow right up there on the bank, and then it comes down real fast. So where I'm sitting at in the kayak here is probably 15 feet or more, I would say. Here's a fish. See, I see my line swimming. As far as like water temperature, I couldn't tell you. It should be this time of year in June. Should be 80 degrees probably, but we had some rain this week. Quite a bit of rain actually, rain and storms. And the water temperatures just feel, act like somebody on camera here, Blue Gill. This is your moment of fame. That's the calmest one of all. But the water temperature when I was unloading the kayak this morning, and getting my feet in the water, it felt colder. It felt like it had dropped a little bit. So I don't know what the temperature is. But the good thing about what we're doing here today with this just casting, beating the banks, you know, it really don't matter. So we're going to catch fish. And, you know, if we figure out, water temperature don't matter, but if we figure out that fish are coming a little bit deeper, then I just, I got to slow down, you know, I'll have to just be a little bit more patient, let that jig fall farther down in the water. And that's how we'll get them today. But that's a, another nice thing about fishing in a kayak like this that ain't got all the bells and whistles is you don't have to, you don't have to overthink things. I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody of overthinking, you know, overanalyzing, looking at way too many details. And I almost feel like that fishing out of a kayak or a canoe, and I thought I had me another one right there. I almost feel like it kind of, in some ways, helps with that because you're limited, right? Like, I can't sit here and, and have the conversation in my head about should I be fishing in here or back in a creek because one of them's three or four degrees warmer or cooler than the other. You know, I, I, I don't know what the water temperature is, so there's nothing to think about. My range is limited because of my pedals. You know, I can't make a long run like I could with the motor. So 
you know, if, if things ain't working out here, I can't make a, I'm not going to make a 30 minute run, you know, with the, with the motor. So, um, we just gonna have to figure out how to catch them here. It really simplifies things in a lot of ways. So there's good and there's bad. And again, after dealing with my other kayak and the hassle of breaking it down, charging batteries and stuff, I just had to come out here today and kind of charge my own batteries. <laughs> not, not have to fool with it. I uh, basically got stuff done around the house this week. Here's fish. Come up here, bluegill. Well, it's been raining and storming. I've been knocking out chores around the house. and Finally, yesterday evening, it dried out enough I could get the yard mowed because I know that bluegill wasn't going to mow it for me. I can't get them bluegill to do anything, man. They're just, these bluegill... They take and take and take, but they never give. That's how they are. They'll take every bait you throw down there on them, but they won't, they won't give back for the privilege of you giving them that bait. You know, they just, they won't lift a finger to ever help you. And I couldn't get them to mow my yard. I had to do it myself. Me and, me and Daphne the dog got out there and I think I was in a branch right there. I don't think that one was a fish. Daphne got out there and supervised me yesterday evening and we got it done and I think that was our last chore for the week. So we got out here today and see what we can get into. Have a little fun this morning. It's humid as all get out, but with it being cloudy, it's gonna stay it's comfortable, hopefully. Hopefully at least Cool enough we can keep a camera rolling for a couple hours. My camera on tournament day up there on Sandusky Bay, my camera overheated and it was, it was hot, but it wasn't like miserable hot, but it was just sunny, sun beating down on that camera, man. It just fried it. And I went through a stretch up there if any of y'all, if you ain't never been to Sandusky Bay in Ohio, it's you know, its own lake area. It's, just, it's a huge bay. It's several miles long and really wide and real shallow. And it is just loaded with channel cats. And most of you watch my videos regularly. You know I ain't a fan of the channel cat, but there was a lot of money on the line in this tournament. There was a lot of sponsor money they had conjured up. So I went up there to try to get my share of it, you know. And um, those fish up there, man, it's just, you get on a school of them, it's one after another after another. And I went through a stretch where I was just, I, initially I was dragging. And I got on some fish, and so I would unhook a fish, and I'd just cast my line back out. I'd spot locked while I was getting them fish. I was going to try to get them on the board and get them pictured and stuff for the tournament. And before I could do it, I got another rod going down. And it was like that for probably close to an hour straight where it was just, I, I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't move. I just sit there spot locked and every time I would reel in a fish, unhook it, leave it sitting in the floor, rebate, cast back out, and there'd be another fish on before I could get the, the pictures done. It was, it was awesome, but leaving the camera rolling like that in the direct sun, it was just, GoPro just wasn't having it. <laughs> We're not going to have that issue out here today. And hopefully we ain't going to have the issue of catching one channel cat after another either. I will admit, when you own a bite like that, even with it being channel cats, it was fun. Now, none of them was real big, but it was still fun just getting bit just continuously like that. But with that said, I'm fully content with never catching another channel cat again as long as I live. <laughs> so I hate them things. They are the most uncooperative fish 
you know, when we're doing these tournaments and stuff, it's uh, photo tournaments. We, we got an approved measuring board, we take a picture, time date, GPS stamp, tournament identifier, all that stuff. And when you're in a, like a, a, a normal tournament in a place that's got blues and flatheads and, you know, you're catching hopefully bigger fish in the tournament, you put them bigger blues and flatheads on the board and they will sit there and behave for you. They'll just be calm. Lay there, let you get your picture and whatnot. But you get a smaller fish and and all of them channel cats, you know, they're all, I think I got two or three fish on tournament day that was over 30 inches. But they're fun size and smaller they just will not behave. I mean, they want to flop around. They just won't lay on that board, you know, and it's a, it's a chore fighting them things. So needless to say, by the end of the day, I was over it. <laughs> Didn't do worth a diddly poo in the tournament. I think I finished 12th was my, where I ended up at. There was 33 people in it, so I was kind of just upper third of the pack, I guess. Daniel from Catfish Sumo, my buddy, he won it, which is pretty impressive with him going up there. You know, neither him or I had ever fished on Sandusky Bay before. We just kind of went up there a couple days early and kind of got a feel for the place, found us some boat ramps that we could launch at and just went fishing, you know. And him and I, we ended up fishing different places on tournament day, which was probably the smart thing for him since he ended up winning obviously he went to the right place but pretty impressive i think here's a fish pretty impressive for him to go up there and get the win and beat some of those guys that fish that body of water regularly i'll take all the credit for his win of course <laughs> that fish right there ain't taking none of the credit for getting caught he said it was all my fault he got caught Go back over there. I'm just making my way along here, y'all. You can see there on the bank, it's just, it's rocks. And so, undoubtedly, there's stuff there under the surface that we can't see, you know, pieces of limbs and trees and stuff that have fallen off. And I hear something in the woods over yonder. I don't see it, but I hear it walking around. I ain't heard a lot of activity. Of course, I've been flapping my gums too, and that takes away from me or you hearing anything as far as nature goes, but I ain't been hearing a lot of squirrel activity. Ain't heard no turkeys. Birds are chirping. I ain't heard a lot of, I ain't seen no deer yet. Unfortunately, ain't seen a lot of fish yet either. Kind of a sporadic bluegill thus far. We'll sneak on up here a little bit. We'll sneak around this branch where we can cast in a little closer here. May just, may just throw one up under there too while we're at it. No, I won't either. I'll just throw into the damn tree. Dadgummit. Professional folks. We're going to catch some trees today, and I don't want to hear your mouth either, because you know darn good and well, if you was out here with me, if you and I was in a boat together, well, I'd have done had to took you over to the shore 15 times getting jigs out of trees already. You know it's true. Some of you's out here watch these videos acting like you build ants or something ain't never cast into a tree. I can hear you now. Your girlfriends and wives that's been on a boat with you, they know otherwise. If they watching right now too, God help them. They've got stuck watching this crap, but they know. They, they've seen how you cast. <laughs> They're going to know when you tell them lies. Here's something right here now coming right at me. Let's see what this is. That's a little better bluegill right there. 
Nice. Nice, Mr. Bluegill. Come on down. You gonna you gonna behave for camera? You gonna act out like your friends? Don't you tell these people to hit the like button, would you? Nope, he ain't gonna tell you. He does not care if you hit the like button. I'll tell you something interesting. Most of y'all won't give a crap, but it is interesting to me at least. On these raw and uncut videos, they get they get a lot of views for the most part. I, I've, I've de there's enough of you out there that watch this stuff that they, they get quite a few views. So thank you for that, first off. But compared to a normal video that I do, whether it's catfish video or carp video or even an edited ultralight video that's you know 15, 20 minutes long, these raw and uncut videos don't get a lot of like the thumbs up or like but whatever it's called they don't get a lot of that which is weird that i don't get a lot of thumbs ups but yet youtube still for some reason pushes the videos out interesting i don't know stuff like that i look at stuff like that you know when i when I have videos that do well, I like to try to look at them and analyze and try to figure out, okay, well, if this video did good, why? What, what was it about it that helped this video perform when others didn't? Look at this bluegill here. He's like, I saw my friend get caught and I couldn't be left out of the action, so I had to do the same thing my friend done, which was bite this, this gulp right here. See, bluegill, they're like that, too. They analyze stuff. Say something, would you? He's speechless. He couldn't. He couldn't come up with the words in that moment. I understand. It's, it's a high-pressure job being a bluegill on my videos. There's two of them over here, though. Maybe, we, maybe we're getting on some right here. Oh. Here's another one. That's another little better one too, buddy. Yeah, buddy, that's a well, this is a dark one right here. Look at this. Look at the look at the coloration on him, that orange there, dark orange. You good looking bluegill, you know it? Anybody ever told you that? Let me try to get you here up on the camera look at that man the colors on that that's awesome you're the best looking bluegill we liable to catch today get you a modeling contract they'll put that fish right there on the in fisherman magazine cover photo throw over and get another one we got a streak going right here don't we y'all is that two or three in a row i don't know There's definitely some fish right here, though. I think I've made a lousy cast. I didn't get that cast for it. I got one anyway, though. I made a lousy cast, and we got one anyway. The streak is alive. I don't know how many it is. If it was two or three, then this will be either three or four. Nope. Oh. I'm going to have a hard time keeping up, because I can't keep up when I, when I know the number. I definitely can't keep up. <laughs> it's possibly one of two numbers. I'll let you people at home figure it out. One of you mathematicians out there, it's got one of them little clicker things. One of you is probably a little league umpire. You got one of them balls and strikes counter things. I can't imagine right now in today's society why anybody would want to be a little league umpire because these these you know i'm uh, i'm telling on myself at my age you know but i'm 41 so what i consider to be kids today are in their 20s 
and those people are having kids so I can only imagine what uh, little league coaches and umpires and all of them people have to go through dealing with the parents which are you know again in their 20s right now I couldn't do it I, it's there's no way <laughs> I mean, dealing with the kids would probably be okay, but the parents would be, I couldn't do it. And we broke our streak while I was, while I was talking about the Little League. Still going to make another cast or two over here behind me and just see, see if I can get some more. There's some better quality bluegill on something right over there. I don't really see what they're on. All I see is rocks right here, but... There's got to be something down there. I'm just letting it jig. I'm just letting it fall. With this particular bait, with the gulp, the, in my opinion, the best way to fish it is to kind of let it sink down. You know, oftentimes you'll see me doing it right there, you know, twitching it. Most of the fish you catch are going to be on the fall. Now, a lot of plastics, you'll catch them on the retrieve more than you will the fall. But this one, for whatever reason, and I've watched this thing in clear water. I've watched how it falls on that small jig head. It kind of just in and out, kind of sways in and out on its way down through there. That jig head, 164th ounce, it's light enough that you know, obviously the, the jig head end is slightly tilted down, but it's not fully vertical. It's kind of horizontal as it, as it sachets its way down through there. Did you like how I work the word sachet into this video? Sachet. I can't spell sachet, but I like to say it. I don't know why. It's one of them words. I hope sachet is spelled with five letters. That way it'll eventually be on that Wordle game. I don't know if anybody else in the world still plays Wordle, but I do. I play it almost every day. The thing I don't like about Wordle is if you miss a day, you break your streak. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should definitely look it up. It's very fun, very addictive. It doesn't take very long to play either. So Wordle is a, you get six tries to figure out a five letter word. You can play it one time a day, or one, you know what I'm trying to say. You can play it once a day. There's, there's one word per day on there. It's free. And it keeps track of how many days in a row that you've got the correct word it keeps track of how many how many times that you got it on one try two tries all the way down to six tries you get six chances to get it right and each time you put in a word it will tell you if one of the letters in the word you picked if it's in the word itself and if you have it in the right place and so you kind of know as you make your way along, it kind of tells you what letters are left that you can pick from. So anyway, I've lost a few times. You know, there's, there's been times where you get a word like, I'm trying to think one off the top of my head. Um, like you just take the word splash, for instance. Let's say the final word splash. Well, it could be splash, it could be smash, you know, there's clash, there's a lot of words that end in A-S-H. So depending on this bluegill here, he could take eight tries, he'd never get one of these words. So it's usually words like that, where I'm just guessing the wrong word too many times. Those are the ones where I actually lose. But it's always frustrating, you know, you, you you get up and you break your routine, you know, something else is going on and you forget to play and it breaks your streak. I think a streak should only be broken on Wordle if you actually lose. But that's just me.
that's clearly not what the people who made the game feel like. So, my longer streak on there, I think it's 100 and 150 something days, 160 something days. Regardless of, if you don't play Wordle, you totally should. I think what I'm going to do right quick, y'all, my gulp is kind of, we'd flipped it upside down a minute ago. I'm going to switch it out. It's kind of torn. And we need some more, we need some more juice on there, man. So I'm going to get my peak up. If you're new to my channel, I do use a urine specimen cup here for my gulp storage. The gulp jars that these things come in. And I do, if you're going to buy a gulp, buy the jars. Don't buy the packs. The jars are a better value. You get more in there for the money. And you get all that extra juice. And so I usually, I'll put a couple of them. I think they're... Don't quote me, but I think they're like two or two and a half ounces that them jars come in. And I'll uh, put two of them there in a urine specimen cup. And that's enough gulp for me to fish with for a long time. Because these gulp, I mean, they tear easy. They're soft. But you get, you can get quite a few fish. I can get, I don't know. How many fish have we caught on that one gulp out here so far? 10 or so probably, maybe more. You get quite a few fish on them. And them jars have, I think, probably 25, 30 gulps in a jar. Let me switch that out for a fresh one here and see if that'll help our calls here we got on some bluegill right here whatever this is there were several on there some decent quality i don't know if i mentioned in the intro i'm on melton hill reservoir today which is kind of a deep and clear reservoir the water's a little little stained today just from all the rain we had this week but definitely clearer out here than what it was when I launched in the back of a creek. It was mud back there. And that's one thing about this technique. I don't really like throwing it in chocolate milk water. This kind of finesse style, really the, it's a clear water technique, in my opinion. Clear to stained. Chocolate milk, muddy, colored water, and high winds is where this technique will fail you. It actually failed me up there on Lake Erie, up there at Sandusky Bay. I took it with me because I thought, you know, I might get some bluegill to use for bait. And I threw it some. I threw around some docks up there and kind of on the rocky shorelines. And I couldn't get diddly poo going with it. So. It's not 100% foolproof. It's pretty rare to get skunked. You know, you usually catch something. Even if it's just bluegill, you catch something with it. And undoubtedly, if I had stuck with it long enough, up there in Sandusky, I would have eventually found some, but I just didn't, didn't have the time to, or the patience to fool with it. I was doing pretty good getting them channel cats just on chicken. I'd stopped and got some chicken and some shrimp up there when I got into town. And is this a fish or my snake? Oh, it is a fish. I think that's a bass right there. Smallmouth. Oh, small jaw. But yeah, I'd stopped and got some chicken and some shrimp, and I did pretty good on the chicken, the shrimp left a lot to be desired even though it's kind of the go-to bait up there from what people say you know what i've done y'all well i'm i'm i got something wrong in my head y'all i'm a daggone goofball look here's our small mouth you see this right here that is the gulp that i pulled out of the jar I thought this gulp felt a little loose when I was putting it back on the hook. I took the gulp that I took off the hook earlier. 
I grabbed it and put it back on after I'd pulled out the new one. <laughs> Lordy days. What the heck is wrong? I don't know how I do this stuff, man. Y'all just thank goodness nobody's still watching. Well, I guess we didn't need to switch it out though because we ended up getting another fish on it. I thought it felt a little loose on the hook when I first put it on, but it was like, whatever, you know. Plastic's just a little softer on that one. Goodness gracious. We raw and uncut, though, people. Here's another fish, too. This fish is raw and uncut. That's another smallmouth. We want some smallies right here. That's two in a row. We got a streak of smallies going here. I don't know if there's any bigger ones down there. Well, we got one on the old gulp and one on the new gulp. Can you believe I done that? Put the dang, took one off and put the dang, the same one back on. The, oh, goodness. Well, if that's the worst thing I do today, I'm going to be in good shape. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to, you just got to scratch your head and like, how do I, how do I do this stuff? I am trying to take something here to improve my memory and my brain activity. I've been swindled into a, a snake oil sale. Well, I'm going to try it out. It's ordered. It ain't come yet. But I've ordered me some of that stuff that Joe Rogan's all the time talking about, that alpha brain stuff. It's a supplement that's supposed to help with you, your memory and help you not be as dumb. And I'm going to try it. I ain't much on, I don't like taking stuff. I don't like taking medicine, or supplements and stuff like that. But I'm going to try it out and see. I bought a, 90 a 90 count bottle which i think you gotta take two a day so that's 45 days worth i'm gonna try it and see if i ain't we'll see a month and a half from now if i'm still as dumb as i am today then we're gonna know i bought some snake oil i'm always i'm always questioning that stuff that you their claims and whatnot you know i don't i don't buy into all that hocus pocus but the reviews on it are good enough that I figure, well, what the heck. But you know, that's what they count on. These companies that make these snake oil products, that's what they count on. It's priced cheap enough that they know you'll just take a chance on it. And they get enough people to take a chance on it. They can they can turn a nice profit real quick. And, and they walk away winners. And we walk away feeling dumber than we felt, which was the reason why we tried to get the supplement to begin with. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm gonna try it out, y'all. We'll see how it goes. Some of y'all out there have probably, I got a lot of people on my channel that watch Joe Rogan. So some of y'all out there have inevitably probably tried it too. Thought for sure we might get another smallmouth or something else or something. There's something about this spot that held them smallmouth. There, if there's two of them there, there's probably there's probably more. But we'll make a few more casts here just because. Cause it wouldn't hurt my feelings to hook into a big smallmouth. I like catching the small ones too, but. If we could get a big one, that would be the bee's knees, man. All these fish are fun on an ultralight. That's one of the great things about ultralight fishing is that you can make the small fish fun. You know, a lot of places don't have big fish. You know, even, 
even the species that are in a particular body of water, not all of them are going to have trophy class fish of those particular species. But with an ultralight rod, you can go out and have a good time on, well, like this morning out here. What's the biggest bluegill we've caught so far? Probably six inches, six to seven inch range. These smallmouth that I've got, they've been small too, you know. But they'll put a bend in the rod, pull a little drag, you know. We can have a dang good time on small fish. There's another tree. If you can see up under that branch there that I'm overhanging leaves, there's a tree that goes this way, and there's another one that comes out this way. Smallmouth were in that area there, but I ain't, I ain't getting no other action. Fix this thing. Let's fix our gulp on here. There we go. I still can't believe I put the the used. It wasn't just that I put the used gulp back on the jig head it's that i sit there and in my mind i'm talking to y'all i'm thinking man this gulp feels softer than the others but i still didn't realize what i had done until i caught that other fish and i saw my fresh gulp sitting there on the side of the kayak i'll tell you if if that supplement I bought there, that Alpha Brain stuff, if it fix, fixes me from doing stupid stuff like that, they deserve a Nobel Peace Prize. I don't, I don't know that there's any cure for, <laughs> for that kind of silliness. <laughs> Throw one back up in there between them trees there. We're going to move on from this spot. I've given up on catching any more smallmouth over here. I think we've caught the only two willing to play. We're going to move along, see if we can find us some more, some more bluegill. I wouldn't mind catching a crappie today, too. I got a, I got a piece of grass right here. This is the catch of the day. I don't know what kind of grass that is. It's a... A uh, very unique species, you know. This is this is trophy class right here. A lot of people would have that mounted and put it on their wall. Not me though. I'm catching release. I throw it back. That's the kind of fisherman I am. Don't matter if it's fish or if it's grass or tree limbs. I throw them all back. quiet out here today when I ain't flapping my gums. You can just feel it in the air. Some days it's like that, you know, you can just feel there's a difference in the air. Occasional fish splashing. There are some birds up in the trees, but you know, the squirrels just ain't been active today. Squirrels, deer, and turkey, they sleeping in, I guess. Daphne the dog got her a squirrel at the house the other day she didn't keep it she got hold of it she's been she she lays at my my front door when i'm home i'll open up the front door it's there's the front door and then there's a glass door there and she'll lay there at that glass door and just look out well on my front porch i've got bird feeders out there and them dang squirrels come up there and you know, they're, they're all the time trying to get up there and get in the feeders and stuff. And Daphne, well, oftentimes, she'll see them on the porch and she'll be whining and crying. And I'll get sick of listening to her. So I'll go over there and open the door and, and she'll shoot off like a rocket trying to get them dang squirrels, you know. And Daph you all have seen Daphne in them bicycle videos, man. She's, she's fast. She's got some speed to her. And she finally, the other day, she's wisened up. Instead of just chasing after the squirrels, she's learned she needs to go toward the tree and cut off their path. 
And so she finally got when I watched her. And uh, she got the thing in her mouth and it got out and it made it part of the way up the tree and she jumped up and snatched that thing off the tree and got it again. And it got away from her another time and finally got up the tree. But I thought, boy, that's all I need her to be bringing a dang squirrel back to the house. I didn't think she'd ever catch one, but she's, she's a pretty smart dog. Them squirrels, you know, they don't always make correct decisions. When they're, when they're panicking, I think this is how they get run over on the roads. You know, they, here's a fish. This fish made a bad decision too, fighting this jig. But them squirrels, sometimes they go right when they need to go left. And that's what happened with a <laughs> squirrel that Daphne got. Is that rain? Y'all, I think it's raining out here. It wasn't supposed to rain anymore today. It is. We're getting wet, fish. This fish says, what are you talking about? you always wet. By gosh, sure as the world. Look at this, y'all. Yeah. Sprinkling. Weatherman has got us again. I guess we're getting wet. We're a long ways from the car at this point, so we're just gonna we're just gonna roll with it. I hope y'all brought brought your rain jackets. I didn't, so <laughs> we're just gonna get wet. <laughs> Hopefully, it won't last long. I thought this rain is all supposed to be out here. It's rained all week, man. Rain and storms. Oh man, I lost one right there. Broke our, was about to start another streak and that one, that one popped free. I think it rains over just like that. It must have been one of them little, them little pop up rains. Probably wouldn't even show up on a Doppler radar. That's why the weatherman couldn't figure it out. We're going to the bluegill though. Bluegill, do you even know when it's raining? I don't know what they'd even know. They, they stay so wet down there. Something's over here splashing behind me too. Throw back over. We getting some action, y'all. They ain't got no, no big hand size bluegill yet, but we're getting some consistent bites all the way down this bank. There's another fish too. We got us another streak going. Here's, here's the second one. He's pulling, man. Nice. This, boy, this right here's a good one. This right here's the biggest one of the day so far, y'all. Calm down, Mr. Bluegill. I'll take that hook out. Can't even see how you hooked fish. This fish got a messed up mouth anyway. I wonder if that fish right there hadn't been caught before or something. Cause he's got all kinds of, you look like you've kissed on a dirty woman's what you look like fish. Look at these, look at these flip flops here y'all. Is that not the silliest looking things you ever seen? I went to the old Navy to get me some flip flops. Let's put him on the board here. Put that tail down. Let's see if you even touch eight inches. Yeah, you'll touch eight inches. Biggest one of the day right there so far. Got a ugly mouth though. These flip flops, y'all. Silliest looking things you ever seen. I went up to the old Navy. I needed some new ones. And they, I like them cheap flip flops, you know. they. Sometimes they sell them for a dollar up there. They wasn't on sale this time, but I needed some. So anyway, I go up there. I ain't got but two pair in my size, and one of them is them silly looking, I don't even know what it is, palm trees or something. They look ridiculous. That's all they had, so I gotta roll with it. Normally what I do is I'll go stock up, you know, I'll buy me eight, 10 pair at a time, and then I'm good for a year or two. Here's another fish. No, boy, I lied to you. I set the hook on a dang 
I've set the hook on a limb here. I ain't get. I set the hook so hard, I ain't getting that in back. I might as well just go ahead and break it off. Dead gummit. Dead gummit. Well, if there's anybody left watching, you are gone now because I got to retie. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like going. I don't like going shopping. And I tried some of them cheap flip flops from Walmart a couple years ago, and they were just even worse quality than the ones from Old Navy. So I went back to using the ones from Old Navy. But for whatever reason, I guess my size is either the most popular size, so they sell out, or it's the least popular size, and they don't order many. Either way, I gotta wear me some goofy looking flip flops around. If I didn't give people enough reason to make fun of me already, now I got them silly things. I set the hook on that tree limb hard though, didn't I? I thought for sure I had a fish. You get a jig that's falling down through the water column. Sometimes when it when it falls into those branches, it feels like a fish bite. Cause you feel just a bump. And if it lands on the branch and sits there, your line will go slack like you know, like a fish has eat it. So that's what I'm that's what I'm telling myself and telling y'all anyway. Throw back over. Are we back in the game? For those of you who stuck around through that, we, we back on it here. The rain's quit now. Quick as it started, it's done, done quit. It's already humid out here. Any rain we get this morning is just going to make it that much worse. I think it's going to be hot this afternoon, but right now it's... It's tolerable right now. That's why I like getting out first light. There's not as many people out. Temperatures even in the summertime is, you know, more tolerable. And typically by eleven o'clock or so when it's when it's so hot you can't stand it and the ski boaters come out. I'm gone. You know, I'm back at the house. I gotta sneak up closer to this bank though. Y'all let me drift off while I was retying right there. We're just gonna keep making our way down through here. We'll see if we can find something else to snag. It's one thing for certain. Even if I don't catch fish on every trip, I promise you I can find something to snag every trip. I don't care. It don't matter what the conditions are like. I can find something to get hung on. Guaranteed. It's one of the few talents I have. I got a fish right here, though. This fish thinks I'm talented because I just caught him. He said he'd never be caught. By gosh, here we go. Come up here, bluegill. You ain't you ain't quite as big as the one that had the messed up mouth. Say something. He says hi and bye. He says he's out of here. He's going back to his Saturday morning cartoons. I don't guess they even show Saturday morning cartoons anymore here's a fish that was running with it buddy that's another that's another bass right here let's see if we can get a jump oh man he spit it what a jump that was a little better one right there wasn't it <laughs> that one was the biggest bass of the morning i botched it he come up two foot out of the water right there <laughs> that's awesome love seeing that 
They small mouth like them some gulp, man. You just run into them. Anywhere you got these, I like, you know, rocky areas. You tend to, you seems like you tend to get more smallmouth in those kind of bluff wall or real rocky banks. But you run into them occasionally. Throwing this gulp, man. If I was specifically targeting bass today, like I have used this technique in tournaments and I, I've cached doing it. But if I'm just targeting bass specifically, I will throw a three inch gulp just to eliminate the, the bluegill bites and I'll use a, a little bit larger hook size. I like a number two size hook. And that's just to, well, a couple things. One, it, it'll eliminate those small bluegill bites, which, you know, coming out here today, I like catching, I wanna catch every fish. You know, I'm in the mode to get a bunch of action today. But if you're in a bass tournament, the time you spend reeling in those small bluegill, unhooking them, it's, it's time you just don't have in a tournament. So a larger hook will eliminate those fish. They'll still peck at the bait and nip at it and stuff, but they won't be able to get the hook as frequently. Well, something, did y'all hear that? Something was up under there behind that stump. I heard him back there. So anyway, yeah, I'll use a larger hook on those, and um, that three-inch size just it, it just eliminates the smaller bites, and and you tend to get a little bit bigger quality bass that'll eat those. But a day like today, where I'm just I'm wanting to get a ton of bites, I'm wanting to get a a lot of fish. This is my favorite setup by far. One sixty-fourth ounce, number eight hook, perfect size for this one-inch gulp. Two-pound line, so you can cast it. Now, if I'm now if I'm throwing specifically for bass, and I'm using the three-inch and and larger jig heads, I will go to four-pound line in that situation. I buy my line and those bulk spools from Trout Magnet. So it's really the best value in my opinion. You get them 10,000 yard spools for, the last time I bought some they were $39.99. So I can switch out my line for a quarter basically. Because what I do with my spools, it's some money saving tip for you here. When you spool your reel with line the first time, fill it all the way up obviously. But when you go to change out your line, don't strip all of the line off. Strip half the spool off. Then take you a piece of electrical tape or duct tape or something and tape that line down there on the spool. And then so the next time when you go put your fresh line on, you're not having to re-spool the whole reel. You're only having to re-spool half of it. And so that saves you a lot of money because you're not having to put a whole spool of line on every time and you can switch out your line keep it fresh more frequently because after after a couple trips three trips with this two pound line it just don't cast as good you know it gets kind of twisted up and stuff from all the drag get pulled so i like to switch it out pretty frequently and by buying the bulk spool those ten thousand yard spools and by only refilling half my <clears throat> half my reel up each time it's pretty cheap to do so you know probably breaks down to a quarter maybe 50 cents at the most to be able to re-spool your reel versus if you were doing the whole reel and you were buying those smaller filler spools from bass pro or walmart or whatever for hell i don't even know what they cost anymore probably 5.99 6.99 for 300 yards a line it's a lot more expensive to do that. So there's your little money saving tip for you. But I will go to the four pound size line. I've got the 
those bulk spools. I've got them in two, four, and six pound test. And whatever I need at a particular time, I'll just strip off, you know, 100 yards of line here, whatever I've got on that's half my spool and put on whatever I need for the day. I got a feeling we're going to get bit right over here, y'all. We've got one, two, three, four trees coming into the water, like all in this area. We're going to catch some, if if not a fish, a snag, but we're getting, we're putting our hook in something here. <laughs> we're going to have a, we're pulling on something, by gosh. It's going to happen. Surely, though, one of these trees will have some fish on it. Oh, I see. Either squirrels or chipmunks, something up there fighting. Well, they're on real little devils. It's a wonder that squirrel that Daphne got hold of didn't scratch her eyes out or something. It managed to get away from her twice. I'd wondered what she would do if she actually got hold of one. She chased them anytime she anytime I open that door. It's like the it's like them dog races or horse races, you know, Kentucky Derby. When them gates lift up, they bolt out of there. That's Daphne when I open up the front door at the house. <laughs> she chases out out through there like a rocket man. Hey, what's going on? How you doing? Oh, living well. Hey, you, That's the guy, man. Over here filming. What you doing? Catching anything? Hey, you, wow. Well, you ain't had the pleasure. I'm gonna make you a star. I'm filming right now. Are you really? Yeah. Live? Well, I'm not live, but I'm raw and uncut, so I ain't doing no editing today. I thought you got out of the kayaks. I thought you got out of the kayaks. It's like the mob, man. They let you out and they pull you back in. <laughs> I can't get away from it. <laughs> I'm having too much fun. You got your Torquedo on there? It's a uh, Newport. Newport, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. You know. You got the setup, man. That's that's rigged up nice right there. It's getting there. Yeah. Well, we're a live scope. Yeah, be about it. Yeah. I don't know. You might as well. You you got enough money in that rig. What's what's a couple thousand more? <laughs> close to bass boat territory. The, close, ain't it? <laughs> what are you running now? Uh, this is my pedal kayak here. This is old town. I got my Hobie still too with the motor and all that. Just sometimes you got to get away from the motor and just. No, I have batteries to charge when you get home. Yeah, well, I did that for a little while. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't want to do it every day. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, find the fish. Yeah. Well, I don't normally fish, so. Yeah, I'm out here throwing the gulp this morning. I brought some along, too, just for fun. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. In case it gets really slow. Yeah. I got several bluegill and a few smallmouth. Nothing real big, but. Yeah. Cool. Good to see you, man. Yeah, good seeing you. I'd hope to not see anybody today, but I guess seeing you, that's that's good enough. <laughs> I saw your car there. I'm like, mm, I wonder if he's out there somewhere. Yeah, sure as the world. <laughs> we'll see you, man. Good seeing you again. Let's see what we can get over here. Surely to goodness, one of these trees. This one right here is the big one. I bet you it's got some branches coming off of it. We're going to, even if we don't get to fish, we're going to find a branch to get hooked into. 
tree that big has got to have some branches coming off of it. And it may be some branches all the way out here and under me too. But if it's out this far, it's probably at least 20 feet out here this far away from the bank. We ain't got a single fish up there though, have we? Not a tap or anything. I ain't gonna spend too much time on it. If they ain't there, they ain't there. Or if they ain't wanting to buy, they ain't wanting to buy it, you know? We got a lot of other trees down through here that ain't got nothing on them. I'm gonna cast that too. <laughs> That was John, by the way, y'all, for any of you that's still potentially watching at this point in the video. We used to fish on some of them. Used to be the Thursday night bass tournaments here on Fort Loudon. Uh, they Wednesday nights this year. I ain't fished any this year. I'm going to try to get out there at some point. But... Uh, him and I, we you see each other at them tournaments all the time. Then he got out of kayak fishing. I think he got him a boat, if memory serves me. And uh, clearly he's got back in it now. <laughs> Looks like he's got a pretty nice rig there. He's got a, a Hobie 360. And he said he had the Newport on there. I heard that motor. I heard just a, a, a light buzz coming up behind me and glanced back. And there he was dang near snuck up on me that's the thing about kayaks man they're quiet they'll, they'll come up on you would have heard a boat coming he's a pretty good fella though some people I don't mind running into on the water like him you know but some people you just don't want to see. <laughs> you know, the ones that'll, you know, like me and him, you know, we'll sit there, chat a minute, and then we go back to doing what we're doing, you know. Some people you just can't get away from. They'll sit there and talk with you and talk with you and talk with you, and I don't, you know, I try not to cut anybody off or anything, but sometimes you just got to go. <laughs> fish apparently got to go too because we've went a spell without getting one now i just knew for sure on one of them four trees we was going to get bit but couldn't get tapped for those of you who are interested in the kayak catfishing tournaments the next one that I'll be fishing is in August on Kerr Lake. And that's on the North Carolina, Virginia border. I think we're going to be launching. Well, I think we, we can fish anywhere on Kerr Lake, but I think the check in site is going to be on the North Carolina side. So I'm probably going to go over there just like I did with Sandusky a few days early. And kind of pre-fish because I've never I've never been over there before. It's a world-renowned fishery. They've got a, a bunch of big blue cats in there, big trophy class blues. But I've never fished it, so I gotta get over there a little bit early, check it out, try to get a plan together. And then in September is Rising Sun, which is in Indiana. And that's the last tournament of the year on the tournament trail. I'm trying to fish them all. If nothing else, just uh, go see some new places and whatnot and try to support the tournament scene. Kayak Mike's done a good job of getting sponsor money for all these tournaments. I mean, that last tournament up there at Sandusky, Daniel won, I think, 4700 and some odd dollars, almost five grand. And that's a pretty good payout for 33 people, you know. So I just got to learn how to catch fish. I suck at catfishing. It's my problem. If I could ever learn how to catch a catfish, I might could do good in them tournaments. 
There's a fish. We got no, it ain't either. I'm, gosh dang it. That's another one I set the hook on that's felt like a fish and turned out to be a snag. I'm gonna blame I'm gonna blame John. Ever since he come up here, we ain't caught another fish. He done took all the fish down there wherever he was going. Them fish saw where the talent was headed and took off and went with him. Come out of that. There it come. I got that in back, y'all. I got lucky right there. Make sure we ain't. Yeah. Had a little something there on my hook point, didn't we? All right. Well, now that I done spooked those fish that were potentially there, let's slide on down and find some more that we won't catch. I got, I'm got. i telling John, when we get down here to him again, I'm telling him an earful about him taking all the fish with him. I don't think we've got a bite since he come through. And it can't be my lack of fishing talent. It's got to be him. We do for one though. You do this long enough, you eventually get bit and we're definitely due. I got well I got I got a spider web, a tree limb, and we managed to get out. Now we just need a fish. We'd have everything possible to be hooked on that, <laughs> on that cast. By gosh, we, oh, I lost him. We had us one too. We about made it happen right there. It's fitting though. We come out of the spider web, we come out of the tree, and we come out of the fish's mouth. So I guess that cast did kind of all work out. <laughs> There, he got him that time. That's another bass. That's another little smallmouth right there. That's probably what John's after today. I think he's bass fishing. You know, the bass fishermen are they? They into it, buddy. That's all they want to catch. If they catch anything but a bass, they're disappointed. I like catching them all. I like catching everything except channel cats. still can't believe fish can you believe i drove eight hours to go catch channel cats last week that smallmouth can't believe it either look at bug that bug he come in at a, a cameo appearance right there as we was releasing that fish throw back over at one time we got bit i lost one and we caught that so camera situated here where are we at on time hour and 23 minutes we're going to go another 30 minutes or so, I guess. I'm going to fish longer than that, but I wouldn't subject you all to more than about two hours on a, on a video. Oh, there's another big splash down there. That must be a carp. I think an hour and a half, two hours is... For movie purposes, it's about as long as I can sit through, and it better be a good movie, not this crap I'm putting out on the YouTube. <laughs> I ain't watched any good movies lately. I've been watching. Well, I've been watching that Netflix show Manifest, which started out very interesting and quickly got stupid. If I hear Ben Stone. Say, I got to protect my family one more time. I mean, God Almighty, they've wrote that line in to the show 47 times an episode. He was kind of a, he started out kind of a likable character, but now he's just so obnoxious. And I watched, uh, I watched another Netflix show called Messiah. It's like the second coming of Jesus or something. It was stupid. I don't know how. They could have a TV show about Jesus coming back and make every character in the show just completely obnoxious and unlikable, but they did it. A terrible show. 
I guess that's why it only lasted one season. It was kind of interesting, though, because it's kind of how I would imagine that if Jesus descended from the heavens and come back today, I guarantee you, people would be complaining about it. Some people would be, you know, following him wherever he went, and the other people would be rioting in the streets because they're just looking for a reason to riot. So, from that part, it was probably pretty accurate of how things would be. I've often thought there might be, you know, this is tin full hat conspiracy theory stuff right here. But I've often thought there might be, at some point in time, some government somewhere may fake a religious holy experience. Like, you know, some hologram type thing in the sky descending down from the heavens um, just to try to control people or, you know, whatever, like they're doing with the aliens right now. You know, I don't know what they're up to with that. I don't know if they're just breaking us in slowly on them because maybe we got aliens among us or maybe they're trying to use aliens to distract us from something else. You know, who knows? But something along those lines with like a hologram descending from the heavens. If I just stay off, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, I think, about how I just, I hate social media. If I just stay off that, I wouldn't have a clue what was going on in the world. I'd be so much better off. I try to stay off the social media as much as possible. You know, doing this YouTube crap, I'm kind of forced to do it more than I want to just for business purposes and whatnot. But if I didn't have a clue what was going on out in the world, think about how much better our lives would be. If we were just oblivious to what was going on. Do you just live in your normal day-to-day -day life? Because all that stuff that's happening out there, 99% of it don't really affect us. Physically. It does affect us mentally and emotionally when we watch it and we see it on social media and TV and stuff. But it doesn't really have an effect on our day-to-day -day lives other than what we allow it the power to with giving it thoughts and emotions. So if we were just oblivious to what was going on, I don't know what we would spend our time thinking about. Whatever it was, it'd probably be better than that crap, though. Now, we did the other night. We had a incident at the local Walmart where I live, they was somebody went in there and fired off a few shots. And thankfully, nobody got hurt. But they was they was somebody up to no good in there. I was at the Arby's drive-through. I had taken Daphne over to the lake and took her on a little walk, and we went to Arby's to get me a beef and cheddar on the way back. And a girl there at the drive through window said there's a active shooter at the Walmart right now. They got the place surrounded. And I said, well, Daphne, I guess we're going on a field trip. So we went up there and just drove by, you know, see what was going on. They had all the employees outside and had the place. Where I never seen that many cop cars in my town. I didn't know we had. I mean, I tried to call the cops when Daphne got kidnapped. And you couldn't even get a hold of nobody. It's after 5 o'clock. It's all gone home. By gosh, I guess they called me in overtime or something because <laughs> it was more cop cars than I ever seen in my life around the Walmart. But you know, thankfully, nobody nobody got hurt. I don't know that they know who done it. They had offered a $5,000 reward last I seen. 
I don't know. I don't know what they think somebody in the general public's going to tell them. They've got cameras all over the Walmart. So I don't know how they can't figure out who a person is. And people on the TikTok that's, you know, again, I shouldn't watch because it's all garbage, but I've seen some of them Walmart cashiers with the TikTok channel say, they talk about how good them security cameras are over the self-checkout lines. Like people go in there and I guess ring stuff up there on the self-checkout, but they don't. They don't ring up everything. They steal. And Walmart is able to get their names off their credit card or ID or whatever in their purse because their cameras are that good and they can still press charges on them people. That's what they're saying. I don't personally like going to the self. It's rare for me to go to the self-checkout. I will wait in line for the one or two cashiers that are available because you know, I don't work for Walmart. I don't feel like I should have to ring up my own groceries. So I don't do it. I try to just be patient, wait in line for that one that one cashier to work her way through the line, you know. Just me and the old people. And the old people it's paying with check. I ain't I ain't wrote a check and I guess since I paid property taxes last year. I don't hardly write checks anymore, but it still amazes me in the year 2023 that so many people still pay with checks for their groceries. I'm just, I'm amazed by it. I mean, I don't understand why they just won't use their debit card. And then, I assume all Walmarts are like this, but our Walmart here, you don't have to fill everything out on check. They run it through their cash register and it, it plugs in everything for them. They basically just gotta sign it. But them old people just can't understand that they don't have to, to fill everything out on that check. They have to be explained it to them every time. I'm in line behind one of them. This technology today. It'd be nice if we could just get it every, I think, it, I don't know if this concept took off. I remember seeing something about it. It would hit me right then. But them stores, <clears throat> I think they were Amazon stores or something. You'd walk in and get what you need and walk out. And it would just charge you. You'd have to go through no cash register or nothing. It'd be pretty nice if we got to that point where I could just walk in and get my groceries. Well, that fish right there nailed me. Oh, that's a bluegill and a bass. There's a bass after him. Look, there's a bass. There's a bass that's hitting him. I think that's a smallmouth. Oh, come up and eat that thing, buddy. He's still after him. He's following him. Oh, I bet that's not getting on camera with the glare. I could see him. Let me try to get him over here. Oh, he's gone now. There was a bass following him all the way up, man. <laughs> You're a lucky bluegill. That bass wasn't too much bigger than you. But he was falling. I don't know if that, any of that got on video or not. There's just enough glare. I don't know that we're going to be able to see it. I'm going to have to... I never watched these videos, these raw and uncut. I'm going to have to go back at the... Where we at on time? I'm making a mental note. Hour and 34 minutes. I'm going to go back and see if I can see that fish on that. <laughs> that happens when you're doing this ultralight fishing. You'll have, you'll be reeling in a bluegill and bass will come up and just smash them bluegill. I've had that happen a lot through the years. When I go down there to that pond and fish with Daphne, I'll throw out a live bluegill and I've been, I've gotten some really, 
really good bass this year, largemouth, in that pond just on live bluegill. Old Daphne's slack assing though. She ain't had no bike sent to her in a while. Like there for a while, she's getting one about every week, but she needs to get back on her game, I guess, because them's a, them bikes are a nice payday. I keep one just to ride around the yard and stuff and let her chase me. She loves them bikes, man. She's, that's how we run out a lot of her energy. Every day I'll get out there and we'll do a few laps around the yard and she'll just chase me the whole way, you know? She'll chase me and I'll chase her and we have a good time with it. Here's another fish. But uh, we keep one and the rest of them, we just turn around selling. I got a waiting list on them things, man. <laughs> I got the next three bikes I get, I done got sold. So I gotta, I gotta get Daphne to get me some more of them. back over it's two bluegill and we know for sure there's one bass that followed that thing up finally got on some more fish here i guess these fish got tired of chasing john up river so they just stopped here <laughs> i see him he's way down there that's a nice thing you know you come out in a place like this there's all this shoreline and you know i can take a stretch up here john he went you probably can't see him on camera he's way down there you know, we can all have plenty of places to fish here, give each other space and stuff. And these fish all up and down through here too. You know, it ain't like a an area where you've got fish on one specific spot and then it's just devoid of fish everywhere else. I mean, there's, we'll go through dead stretches like we have this morning or you just can't buy a bite, but then you, you know, you'll get a fish here, you get a fish there, you get on a tree that's got several and this time of year with the water temps being warmer and these fish's metabolism being high, a lot of fish that are up higher in the water column, you can get a lot of, a lot of fish doing this. Spring through fall, this is a really, really good technique. You get into the winter, you still get them, but you gotta, you gotta kinda, gotta find them. Sometimes fish go deeper in the winter depending on how cold the water temp is. Or you'll you'll find them kind of in backwater creeks and stuff. You know, you gotta, you gotta look for them a little more. You're not just gonna go out at any specific shoreline at random and be able to catch fish in the winter. But you still can do it in the winter. I don't do it as much when it's cold, just because of the, my hands. You know, this technique, when you get them light bites, you need to be able to feel the bite. And when your hands are, you've lost feeling in your hands, <laughs> it's hard to do. Or if you got big gloves on, you know, you can't hardly feel then either. So I do more of this in the spring through summer, but this is one of my favorite things to do. I love coming out here and just, just going fishing. There's just something rewarding about it, especially just keeping it simple, you know, no motor electronics, just fishing pole, some jig heads, gulp. Very basic, but very productive. I'm in my pedal kayak. It could just as easily do this in a paddle kayak. Be a little bit more effort as far as getting to and from you know the launch but either way i mean you don't you don't need a lot of gear and a lot of stuff to catch fish it helps better the tools you have the easier it is to get the job done right i mean that's true with anything but you don't have to have that kind of stuff it's nice to just kind of get back to your roots occasionally. I think we got a little bit of current out here this morning. They must be moving some water because this, you can see the stuff floating here is kind of going downstream. I 
I thought for sure there'd be something on this old dead tree right here, but nothing. Gulp here's tore up though. Let's switch this gulp out while we add it. This one's been on there a while. It's probably ain't got no probably ain't got no more juice on. I'll tell you what I am gonna do though this time. I'm making a I'm paying attention. We ain't having no more incidents where I put the old gulp back on the hook. I'm never going to hear the end of the the three people who was still watching the video to that point in time is never going to let me hear the end of that. Thankfully, the point in the video that it happened, there ain't that many people left watching. <laughs> That's my one saving grace. If that had happened early on, I'd be in trouble. I'd be hearing it from everybody. All right, we're back in the game again. Fish, just like that. Changing that gulp changed our luck, didn't it? That's another nice bluegill right there, man. That's another good one. Come up here, bluegill. This is another one here that's probably pushing that eight inch mark. Let me get my little measuring board here. Nope, he don't want to be measured. No, nope. easy fish, you're gonna spike my foot now. Them fins hurt on my feet. No, he's way shorter than I thought he was. He's probably seven, seven and a half. Yeah, I hear fish. That fish right there knew he wasn't going to measure up, so he didn't want to be measured at all. That fish is smarter than I give him credit for. He said the illusion of him being close to eight inches was better than him not being anywhere close to that. Perception is reality. If we thought he was eight inches, then technically he would be. But when you put him on the board, a measuring board don't lie. Tough break, fish. We just ruined his day. He ate pretty close to that bank, though. Some of these areas, you just can't get a cast up to the bank with the trees coming out so far. This area here, we can pretty much cast anywhere we want. Throw one over here on that tree. I see another tree coming out right here. Here comes this another boat. I ain't seen many boats today. That's how I like it. I want to see as few as possible when I go fishing. One of the reasons I've got into carp fishing so much is the places I'm going carp fishing, I don't see nobody. Cat fishing, I'm out in the main channel usually. You know, kind of out in the boating lanes out there. Can't avoid them. But all the other types of fishing I do, I can hide from people. We had on the time here. Y'all sick of me yet? Hour and forty-four minutes. Let's give it like let's give it like fifteen more minutes. Let's just hit the two hour mark since we this close to it. Let's see if we can get us a few more. I feel like we've went through a little bit of a I mean, we've got an occasional fish down through here, but really for the last, I don't know, thirty minutes or so really we've been we ain't got on a good concentration of them, so I guess what I'm trying to say. Is that a fish? This is a fish. No, it ain't. It's a danged old turtle. I thought it might have been a limb, and then it pulled back. We got us a turtle right here, y'all. <laughs> oh, man. Dadgummit, I ain't got my net with me either. 
Dad gum it. <laughs> I love turtles. I don't want to catch them. I hate hurting a turtle. Come over here, turtle. Come over here. Let's see if we can get hold of you. I ain't going to hurt you now. I don't want to break my line either, though. Let's see if a little slack here. Let's see if I can get hold of it. He's a slider, so he ain't going to. He'll probably try to bite me, but he ain't going to be able to do no damage to me. Come over here. Come over here, buddy. I'll get it out. Come inside here. Oh, there it came. It popped right out then. Hey, Turtle, tell these people that's watching out there, tell them what you think of them. You like being a YouTube star? You seem to be pretty into it. You all calm and relaxed now that I got hold of you. He said, this is the life, man. This is the life. Other than having a sore lip, man, he's living it up. <laughs> Go on, buddy. There he goes. <laughs> well, that went easier than anticipated. I thought we was going to have a time getting that hook out. You do catch some turtles occasionally, man. They, they like the gulp, too. Everything likes a gulp. I set the hook on that, though, and I at first thought it was a branch, and then it pulled back, and I was like, man, this is a nice fish. Yeah, I saw him. <laughs> Dang old turtle. That'll probably be the catch of the day, though. It's a pretty good sized slider. Oh, slider turtle. He's a friendly fella, though. He wasn't hissing at me or trying to bite at me or anything. Another tree right here. I don't want to make too many casts over here by it though. I can see some branches down in the water that ain't very friendly looking. Them branches on that tree ain't as friendly as that turtle. Them some jig catching branches down there. So unless there's some fish on it right here up near the top of it, we ain't we ain't fooling with that one too much. I done had to I done had to retie too much in this video as it is. Where we at on species now? We got smallmouth, bluegill, and a turtle. I don't know how many fish we've caught. They got several overall. It's just been kind of a another one of them days where it's just been a grind. No, you're not having to not having some tree where you're getting just 20 fish in a row off of it. I love going on them long streaks. Just ain't had that opportunity today. What is, this? is this another turtle here? It's bigger, whatever it is. This is a better fish right here. I don't know what this is. is that another small. I think I don't know what that is. is that a smallmouth? He's dark. He's dark color. This is a good one, y'all. This is a good one. A two-pound line. I got to play my drag. I got to take my time. Gotta stay calm. And just let the fish play. Let him run. Let him tire himself out. We've got him away from the objects over here. He's moved out. Oh yeah, smallmouth. That's a good one. Good smallmouth right here. Let's go tire him down. Whenever he's ready. I may loosen my drag just a smidge too. It's gonna, I'm gonna keep leading him out here kind of farther away. I'm backpedaling. Get him away from those trees over there. Get him away from the shoreline. Only thing out here we gotta worry about is him kind of running up under there and getting my pedals. It's a two pound line, you know, not very abrasion resistant. So you don't wanna have a lot of objects that this fish can be running you across but out here in open water we're good 
the exception of my pedals. Yeah, that's a good small mouth right there. I told you all, you get some good fish on this on the one inch size. I mean, I know it's a small bait. And most people think, you know, you're only going to get three, four inch bluegill, but, and you do get a lot of those, but you will catch some big fish on this. I've caught some big drum. I've caught some big small mouth. You will get some huge fish from time to time. Right place, right time. You put it in their face, they're going to eat it. About to come up and jumping again. Oh, this is a pretty one right here, too. He's got all kinds of good colors on him. Looks like he's got something on his face there, too. Come over here, fish. You got a knot on your head. So this fish smarted off to the wrong person. He's got a pump knot on his head. I do need me a net for a fish like this. I don't want to grab my line that's playing with fire here let's see if i can got him we got him y'all nice small mouth man nice nice small mouth right there that oh did you see that jig just fall out there's that knot i was talking about on his head nice smally you were a heck of a battle man let's put him on the board We'll get a length on you, buddy. You're good. Oh, yeah. That right there, folks, he's 17 and a half inches, looks like. Nice. That's a quality smallmouth anywhere right there, man. Nice. Yes, sir. That made my day, y'all. Now, I ain't much of a bass fisherman, but when I can hook a smallmouth this size on my ultralight... That's awesome. <laughs> you ugly though on that some some fish right there, man. He come up and busted his nose. This one smarted off to the wrong person. Well, let's get out of here, buddy. There he goes. How about that, y'all? Out and right there, hey, that's fist pump worthy, buddy. Let's keep it keep it going here, man. Well, dry my hands off, fix our gulp back. It's still good on there and everything. Let's just make another cast over there. Man, that's awesome. Nice smallmouth. Well, I first saw him come up, kind of just scooting across the water. I saw how dark he was, and I was like, is it a smallmouth? Could it be a carp, possibly, that I've hooked? But once he made that second jump, I was like, that's definitely a smallmouth. <laughs> they are a high flying fish man they fight hard too but yeah y'all I mean two pound line the number one mistake I see people make when they go ultralight fishing is they use line that's too heavy anytime somebody tells me that they've tried this technique and they didn't have success or they wasn't enjoying it. I ask them what kind of line they're using. It's always six pound test, eight pound test. The lighter the line is that two pound line is going to allow you to cast these small jigs and it's going to allow your bait to fall down through the water a little bit more naturally. And it just translates into more fish. And when you get a better quality fish like that, if you just, you know, use your drag, you don't want your drag locked down this style of fishing, but use your drag, play the fish, try to guide it out away from stuff. You can land them. You can land some really good fish doing this. I've caught some big drum on the ultralight back in the winter. I was using the live scope on my other kayak and got a big blue cat up to the surface. I didn't land him, broke my line, but I just did. I didn't have a net. I didn't. I had to grab my line because I was out in open water. I couldn't. Not much you can do in that situation as far as landing a big fish like that. But 
I played him out forever and was able to get him all the way up to the kayak before it broke just by just by using the drag and getting out in open water and stuff so don't be fearful of the two pound line if you're on the fence about the ultralight fishing just because of the line size don't don't be fearful of it i promise you'll land bigger fish than you expect with the two pound line it's all about the drag I think oftentimes people that come from the bass fishing world, you know, they're used to throwing crankbaits and spinner baits and chatter baits and, you know, them power fishing lures. And they're using heavy line and setting the hook really hard and horsing fish in, you know, them bass fishing. You watch a bass fishing video or the tournament guys, man, they, from the time they hook a fish to the time it's in the boat is. 10 seconds you know 15 seconds i mean it's a very very quick fight even on larger fish and so when you've got that kind of that kind of mentality and those kind of habits it is kind of hard to transition into the ultralight fishing because you can't you can't set the hook that hard you'll break the line and you can't leave your you can't have your drag locked down but you know with this with the small hooks the small gauge wire hooks on these jigs you don't have to set the hook very hard because as sharp as they are and as thin as they are they're going to penetrate you know they're going to hook the fish it just really becomes a matter of kind of playing the fish out man that was fun though y'all <laughs> That made my day. <laughs> we will hopefully get a few more down through here. I think a small skipjack busting on the other side of me over here. What's this? Oh, crap. We're going to get a few more, all right? We're going to get a few more snags. Let me see if I can work my way over here i see what i'm snagged into it's some more of them jig catching branches down there them little thin ones that tree right there is full of them i shouldn't have thrown one there it come got it back if i'd seen them branches before i thrown i wouldn't have wouldn't have made the cast I'm gonna throw on a tree. I like for it to be the bigger branches. The little thin ones, man, you just get hung every single time. They may be fish on it. Them little thin branch trees. There'll be people argue with me in the comments, you know, and be like, well, you're missing fish. If you don't throw at them trees, and that's true, but you get snagged so much, you have to break off so much. I feel like it ends up costing me more fish over the course of the day just from my downtime. So I'd rather sacrifice some fish by not throwing at stuff like that so that I'm not having to retie when I get to the next thing. I'm good to go. Spend more time with baits in the water. That's just my philosophy. Y'all do whatever the heck you want to. Don't, it don't affect me one iota. need to get one more fish for this video y'all one more i ain't done fishing i'm on i'm gonna fish my way on down through here probably two or three more hours at least oh y'all didn't see, thankfully y'all really didn't see that camera's pointing the other way i got my other rod behind me <laughs> it was hung in a tree Goodness gracious. Hit that tree on my cast. We're in bad shape here. Thankfully, nobody's left watching at this point. See me goofing up like this. Hope I get me a few more smallmouth today. Well, y'all, we're not completely raw and uncut anymore. 
my camera battery pack died camera shut off so anyway we almost raw and uncut on this video i was about to wrap it up anyway i'm just going to try to get one more fish here and then we'll close out the video i was running my gopro off the battery pack with no battery actually in the camera by doing that it helps dissipate some of that heat inside there and you don't overheat as bad when you're running for long periods of time but when your battery pack dies you don't have a battery inside the camera to take over <laughs> so that's the advantage and disadvantage to doing that Fortunately, though, we haven't overheated today, so it's worked out. Nope, not hasn't, hasn't been any direct sun either, but we ain't overheated. But no, I'm just going to... We were close to the two-hour mark before we ran out of battery there, so I'm going to get one more here, and we'll wrap up this video, and then I'm going to keep fishing for another two or three hours probably just see see what else I can get into down here hopefully find me some more smallmouth that would be ideal if I run into some big bluegill it wouldn't hurt my feelings I ain't got any crappie or yellow bass out here today but if I get any of them I got my bucket with me we'll we'll keep a few here we go Let's see what we got here. What's going to be the last fish of the video? Bluegill. We started with the bluegill and we ended with the bluegill. How does it, how do you feel, bluegill, about being the final fish of the video? Does it make you feel happy? Sad that it's over? No feeling at all? He says, he's, folks, the only feeling he feels right now is the pain in his lip. Get out of here, fish. All right, y'all. Well, hey, if you've stuck around with me all the way to the end, thanks. Very few of you do, but there, again, there's a lot of you out there that like this style of video. And so y'all like it, y'all watch. We'll keep doing it. It's fun for me. So anyway, y'all, I've had a good time. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's do it again soon.